Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is explore what might be perhaps the hardest empirical formula uh, problem that a chemistry student is going to encounter in either an advanced placement chemistry course or in a college uh, chemistry course. And um, this is the problem where an unknown compound, uh, which is usually organic, is combusted uh, in air, and that's Russian for uh, t for oxidizing the compound uh, in the presence of oxygen. Um, in a combustion reaction with an organic compound, and this would be a compound that is composed of uh, carbon, uh, hydrogen, uh, oxygen, perhaps nitrogen, sulfur, or phosphorus. Uh, many of these problems will focus on burning a hydrocarbon, and the word hydrocarbon means that you're dealing with a compound that only has carbon and hydrogen in it. Um, because these problems are pretty hard uh, conceptually to really understand what's going on, and then there are a lot of steps. What I'm going to do in this example is I basically chose what I think is the, uh, the typical um, a pretty hard version of the problem. In this one, uh, what we're going to do is uh, find the empirical formula for tartaric acid. And uh, this is a compound that, that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right, and the, the way the problem reads is fairly typical. Um, so the combustion of 12.01 grams of tartaric acid in the parentheses is the molar mass of the actual compound. Um, you're told which only contains CH and O, so they need to tell you what's in it, uh, produced 14.08 grams of CO2 and uh, 4.32 grams of H2O. Calculate the empirical formula, uh, which I abbreviate as the EF, and calculate the molecular formula, which I abbreviate as uh, MF. Now, you can conceptualize this type of uh, elemental analysis, that's what this is called. So we're taking uh, the 12 grams of the unknown compound, tartaric acid, it's combined with oxygen and then it's burned. The reaction products are filtered and uh, the CO2 is collected and the H2O is collected. And then the gram amounts of each one of the products is known we assume that all of the reactant, all of the tartaric acid reacts to 100%. So we're left with 14.08 um, grams of the CO2 and um, 4.32 grams of the H2O. Now inherent in this problem, and this is the thing that the student needs to understand, is that when we look at the CO2 and the H2O, the crucial thing is to, is to get that all of the carbon that was in the tartaric acid is now wrapped up in the CO2 and all of the hydrogen that came from the unknown is tied up in the water. So we can abstract, or excuse me, not abstract, we can extract the carbon, the mass of the carbon out of the CO2 and the mass of the hydrogen out of the water and um, sum those two values together and then take the difference with 12.01 grams to find the mass of the oxygen. That's basically what we're going to have to do first. Um, now, there's always more than one way uh, to um, complete problems like this. And I'm going to show you the way that I think is the best way. Um, one thing going into this, um, after years of teaching, um, it's routine for me to see students who will try to do all of this on their calculator without writing anything down. And um, this is a grave mistake. Um, it's a mistake because in all the whiteboarding I do, almost always those particular students are making mistakes. And the general argument for why they want to do this with all in their head and in a calculator is because it takes too long to write it all down. But the flip side of that is that um, if you've got to work the problem over several times, then the whole time element thing is really a mood argument. Now, what we're going to do here first is we're going to find the mass of carbon and we're going to find the mass of the hydrogen. And the way I prefer to do that 
is by multiplying the mass of the CO2 and the mass of the H2O by the, ma the fractional mass percent of the carbon and the fractional mass percent of the hydrogen. All right. The way we're going to do that, and I'm going to, I'm going to run this down here, we're going to find the fractional percentage of the carbon and the hydrogen. This is the same as the mass percent. The difference is we're not going to be uh, multiplying by 100. So the, per, the fractional percent of carbon is going to be 12.01. That's the atomic mass of the carbon in the CO2 divided by the molar mass of the CO2. Okay, and um, one of the things you want to do in this problem is carry all your numbers out. Do, do not do any rounding. No rounding allowed. You round at your own risk. So notice that I'm running these numbers all the way out. Okay, my wrist may hurt at the end of this, but the bottom line is that uh, I'm going to have the right answer. All right, and then for the hydrogen, remember there's two hydrogens in H2O. So we're going to have 2.016 uh, grams in the numerator, and then in the de denominator it'll be 18.016, which is the molar mass of H2O. And for this, we get a mass, a fractional percentage, which should be 0.119. And then I'm just going to uh, carry my numbers out, 005. So this is the fractional percentage of the carbon. It's about 27% of the CO2. And this is the fractional percentage of the water, or of the hydrogen in the water, which is around 12%. Uh, so I'm going to bring those values up now. So we'll be multiplying the, the carbon dioxide by 0 0.27289 um, two two All right, and the hydrogen will be or the H2 will be multiplied by 0 0.119005. All right, and uh, the outcome now, in each case is going to be the mass of the carbon and the mass of the hydrogen. And this is the material that came from the unknown. So for the carbon, we're going to have 3.84. And then I'm going to run my, whoops, shoot. All right, hang on one second. So it's 3.8425. Two, six, four, and that's grams of carbon that came from the compound. And then my hydrogen's going to be 0 0.4834101 grams of hydrogen. Okay, now we, we also need the oxygen. And uh, at this point, what we're going to do to uh, obtain that is go ahead and take the difference. So I write down, I've got 12.01 grams of the tartaric acid. I'll just call that the TA. And we're going to subtract from that the carbon. I'm going to, in the interest of brevity, because this is a long problem, I'm just going to go dot, dot, dot like that, minus the, the mass of the hydrogen, which is, I'll write 0.48 dot, dot, dot. But when I do this in my calculator, I do not round, and I run all of my numbers out. So my mass of oxygen is going to be six point or seven point six eight three seven six three five grams of O. All right. Now we're ready uh, to go after the empirical formula, and um, to do this, I'm going to need a little bit more room. So I'm going to take out. Real quick, I'm going to erase the percent masses that we calculated down here. Because we need more room to work. Okay, so here's the drill. What we're going to do next is we're going to calculate the moles of each of the, uh, of, of the atoms that are involved in this compound. We're going to inspect the values to see which is smallest, and then we're going to divide all the values by that number. So I'm going to rewrite the mass of each of the, uh, of each of the elements that we're dealing with. So there's my uh, carbon. 
I'm going to do this in such a way that I call it a stack, so I'm going to be doing simultaneous calculations. And I want them one over the top of the other because when I finally get down to the ratio, I want to be able to see it um, clearly. All right, now we're going to find the moles of each one of these. So we're going to be dividing by the molar mass of each of these respective elements. So I'm just going to scroll down here and put my mole unit in the top of each fraction. And then our carbon's worth 12.01 grams. The hydrogen is 1.008 grams. And uh, the oxygen is uh, 16.00 grams. All right, and what we're going to get for the carbon is going to be 0 0.3199272606. And that's mole of carbon. All right, and then the hydrogen is going to be 0 0.4892. Six nine six zero three two mole of H, and the oxygen is going to be also point four eight, uh, but it'll be zero two three five uh, two one eight eight mole of O. Okay, now uh, in order. To do the next step, what we do is we inspect each of these values and we're looking for which one is the smallest. And then we're going to take that number and we're going to divide that number into all three values to find the ratio in which these elements are going to appear uh, in the empirical formula. So we see carbon is the smallest. I'm going to put a fraction bar here. I'm going to put a fraction bar here. And I'm going to put a fraction bar here. All right. And um, we're going to be dividing by the carbon, and again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to write 0 0.31, and then dot, dot, dot to indicate the rest of the number. All right, and for the carbon, obviously the uh, ratio is 1. I'll show it like this. For the hydrogen, the ratio is 1.5 and for the oxygen the ratio is also 1.5 now at this point the advanced student looks at this and freaks out because you see you've got a decimal here and you go what do I do next now you're supposed to have a whole number well here's what you've got to do next now what the game is is that we need to find a whole number that we can multiply through each of these three values that will give us a whole number. And the way to do this is to be systematic. Don't bother starting with one for the obvious reasons. So you would start with two and just ask the question, if I multiply through here by two, do I get a whole number back? And the answer is yes. So we're going to multiply, and this is, remember, this is just like regular math. So whatever you do to one, you got to do it to all of them. So what we get is C, two C's, all right, we're going to get three hydrogens, and we're going to get um, three oxygens. So the empirical formula is going to be equal to C2, H3, O3. Now, what we need to do next, because in this question you're asked to find the actual molecular formula and you're given the molar mass of the whole of the actual compound so what we're going to need to do next is we're going to have to find the ratio of molar masses of the molecular formula divided by the empirical formula so I need the molecular or I, excuse me I need the molar mass of my empirical formula and my the molar mass of my empirical formula is 75.044 so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, take the ratio. So it's going to be 
0.087 divided by